Candy, for those who don't know, my dad was the late, great John Candy, who's no stranger here to Second City. <coughs> and this evening, I have one of my dad's favorite comedians of all times, the wonderful Anne Ryerson, who was in movies like Minority Report with Tom Cruise, and she was in the show uh, Private Benjamin, and the classic Caddyshack. Now, before I bring Anne on, because I am so excited to get her on here so that we can start chatting, I'm going to play a clip for you guys, and I want you to pay attention. She's the one wearing the pink cap, and she is responsible for so much in this scene. So take a look, enjoy, and then we're going to bring Anne on. Want some? Oh, give me some. Who asked you? Come on, I'm asking. I didn't Joey, ask would you please? Get out Joey, would the entire pool scrub sterilized and disinfected. Here it is. Oh. It's no big deal. Harold Raymond <laughs> and Brian Doyle Murray and um, and Doug Kenny who created the movie. Right. Or, yeah, that was actually in the original script. And Doug Kenny, uh, excuse me, I should say Brian Doyle Murray actually wrote. I mean, really most of Caddyshack. Right. Well, I I've, I've watched it over and over, and I always knew that you were in it. And then all of a sudden, I was like, wait. <laughs> it's actually in the pink cap. But I love it. And I remember, at, and I asked you before you came here, uh, what your favorite candy was. Well, I did, and I said, um, mine is Snickers. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, thank you. And so when you guys all leave, there's Snickers over there that you may help yourself to some lovely Snickers. The reason I like Snickers is they last so long. <laughs> you know, they've got nuts and caramel and chocolate. Well, you were also saying turtles were your favorite, which well, were my favorite as growing up. Because my grandma always used to have oh turtles. turtles. Oh, you're lucky. They were yeah. so oh yeah. Good. We I made a, a Snickers. You know, in, in my day, in my day, <laughs> you we got Snickers bars this big for a nickel, and it, you could make them last truly like the entire afternoon. And, and we did. I remember being on the roof of my girlfriend's house. She lived kind of in a major thoroughfare in Minneapolis, where I'm from. And we were eating our stickers, we were yelling things to people in cars like, Hey, honey, why don't you move a little closer, your sweetheart? <laughs> we, thought <that> was, <laughs> we thought that was just hilarious stuff, you know? Well, I, well, I apologize for giving the mini size. Oh. So you can maybe make that last. Half a day? Though I do like... They're the Valentine's, too. Very cute. Red. What it says that love will make you nutty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which is the truth. What is, which is the truth, that and chocolate. Well, though, I love baby Ruth, not, not just because of Caddyshack, but because my, my baby sister's name is Ruth. And so we used to torment her with baby Ruths. We'd say, oh, look, 
my baby Ruth. She'd say, that's mine. No, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like baby Ruth oh, also. Good. So, and you were born in Minnesota. Did you live in Minnesota and born in Wisconsin? Or where did well, you I, I was born? Well, I was born in Wisconsin, but I was only there for three months. Oh, well, so there. I'm really raised in so Minnesota. You were, there you go. And one of the things I do have to say sitting here with Jen, she is the spitting image <laughs> of her father. <laughs> Sorry, Rose. <laughs> Rose but I mean, really. Really? I'm a, I'm a blonde, but when I, yeah, blonde, I know. When I had dark oh. hair, I looked more like my, my mom. Oh, okay. My mom is slowly going blonder, so oh. we're all. all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 but you, are, you really are the spinning image. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just for now, I'm going to put this Okay, down. but there, there are there are things. Okay, Not thank you. Not you feel like getting hungry. You. So you, okay, so how did you make your way to Chicago? Like, or it, you started in modeling? Well, I did. I, well, I started, I went to Northwestern University. Okay. So I was in, I was in Chicago. And uh, so I saw the second city while I was in Chicago. And I was thought. was on stage when you. Boy, Peter, Peter Boyle, uh, Bert Heyman, Fred Willard. Okay. So it was, it was, you know, it would have been, I was in college from 67 to 71. So I probably would have been there in 69, I'm going to say. And I went there, and I remember thinking, oh, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> but, but I wasn't really a performer in those days. I was a journalist. But then I went back to Minneapolis, and I couldn't get a job as a journalist, and I ended up uh, being cast in Dudley Riggs' Brave New Workshop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is a fabulous improvisational theater. Yeah. If you have, if anybody's uh, been there, it's really terrific. And actually, Dudley Riggs preceded Second City. He, used to, he had a coffee shop, you know, and he used to just stand up and read the newspaper and go, oh, I see in, um, you know, like in Slovenia, they're uh, taking, you know, and he would just make comments on the newspaper. Wow. And that was kind of the way he began. And then he, it, his place kind of expanded. So I was there first. Oh, right. Okay. Then I went and, and visited a boyfriend in, in Chicago. Yeah. And audition, audition for the con. I, I will not come. <laughs> My daughter's in the audience. I'm right. not making any comments. No, we're not going, we're not going there. Boyfriend Chicago yeah. audition. Yeah, Let's yeah. talk about the audition. <laughs> the audition, and I think this is just completely ironic because in the Second City in those, I, I like to say Second mm. City in, in, in a way, it's like a pyramid. Uh, the way it is, Second City is now, it's really expanded so greatly. When we were there, was, there was just hardly anybody in it. And it was very, very small. Because right. I started in 1972. Seven, Second City began in 1959. I started in 72, so 13 years so, yeah. afterwards. And there was only one company with five men and two women, and a touring company with five men and two women. So there was four women. And generally, the touring company fed the women in the main company. I came from Dudley Riggs, and I was truly hated. Now, I have to tell you, no, I really was. Because you missed the touring company well, and went straight. Well, yes, and also because the touring company people thought they were going right into the show. And I, and uh, her name was, uh, but the, the girl who, whose job I kind of bumped out, she she went on, it was uh, uh, Keith and Mon, Keith and Mon, oh, anybody know? Damn, no, damn, no, damn, no. damn. She and a guy went to New York and became a very famous comedy duo. Mm -hmm. So it really worked out for her. And it That's worked. That's good. It worked, out, it worked out good for her. And, and your, good for you. And your you dad do. came in not long after that. When I was in the second city in Chicago, uh, uh, Toronto decided to open a company. And our, our show was Tuesday through Sunday. Theirs was Monday through Saturday. They were off on Sunday, we were off on Monday. So we flew up for their opening. Okay. So that would be Gilda Radner, um, Roseanne, uh, and Catherine O'Hara. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm okay. missing some people. Andrew, uh, and Dave, no, and Dave, Thomas. Dave Thomas, or Joe Flaherty. No, no. Joe Flaherty, not Dave Thomas. Then not Eugene Dave. Eugene Levy, and Brian Doyle Murray, believe it or not. And a few other, and, uh, John was not in, your father was not in that company, but John, very soon after that, they thought, oh, we love this guy. He's so young, because John's one year younger than, than me. <laughs> we determined that backstage. Yep. <laughs> and, and I entered Second City when I just turned 23, so John, you know, probably entered when he just turned 23, because he entered about a year after me. Right. And we both were kind of babies. John really looked like a baby. 
I mean, he did. He had, yeah. he had, he had he a baby had, face. I think he had. He really he had always had that face. baby. And he also kind of had a baby attitude. He really was like a. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a teddy bear. I mean, you could. Who did not love John Candy? Everybody loved John Candy. But when he first came into the Second City, he was kind of an unformed performer. I have to say, Rose, are you? Yeah. If I, if I, yeah. I mean, he wasn't mm -hmm. shaped as much as a performer yeah. right from the beginning. So. As a stage personality in the beginning, John wasn't as strong as because film and TV, I think, really was his thing. And of course, he was very young, and as he got older, he got stronger and stronger. Just like I the more too. you do, the better you kind of the more comfortable you are at it. Yeah, and... but also just you grow up, you know. So, yeah. but John always loved movies so much. I mean, he was like an insane movie nut. So after the shows in, in Chicago, yeah. we would go back to John's apartment. Which was on Crilly Court, yes. which was where I lived when I moved out there. Oh my God. So I lived in the same building, oh. but a different floor. And it, when I decided to go out to Chicago and work for Second City, my mom and I went out and we went looking all around Chicago trying to find apartments. And we couldn't find anything or we couldn't, you know, it just wasn't the right neighborhood. It wasn't close. So my mom's like, hey, let's go take a walk around your dad's old neighborhood right around from Second City and we literally walked in Curly Court and there on the door was a sign that said for rent. It, candy relatives. Candy relatives. relatives. <laughs> wow. and, and it was, it, yeah, so we could, I think we finally <laughs> figured out that it was the actual building but different because he had the back, he had a back unit I think or something but it was different. Did it, it still it, smell of marijuana? It because it did. Because, it did. Yeah. It did. because the whole building rigged up. <laughs> Well, we what we really loved. I mean, we, we, after the shows, we would go over and out, and a lot of dope would be smoked. Not not insane. Not <laughs> insane. <laughs> a reasonable <laughs> amount. Yeah. Reasonable. reasonable. These are masters. Right, that, that is true. That is true. <laughs> and, then, and, then we would, and then we'd watch movies. But John knew everything about every movie. He knew every actor. He knew every movie. He knew every plot. We would be, I'd be like, wow, this is cool. And he'd go, he, he'd already seen it like eight times. <laughs> so John had one of the most thorough knowledge, not most thorough knowledge? The most knowledgeable <laughs> about movies. Thank you, thank you. That works. Yeah, about movies that I ever saw. And I mean, and he was, again, I'm saying he was young. So he really, that seemed to be his intense interest. And, and then not long after that, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but then SCTV began. And John was on SCTV and he began to really stand out. Right. Because, because television really, really suited him. And, that, and you know, he had such a, really his personality in person was the same as you saw on screen. He was very, very lovable. And, uh, and also, you know, if you take, you know, every cast is like a soup, you know, with certain spices, you know, there's the sexy girl, <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there's the, you know, intense per neurotic person, you know, whatever. And John was just a very, very unique presence. Yeah. He was very relaxed on stage, you know. How would you describe yourself in that soup? Tall. <laughs> the tall, the tall one. Well, I was young, you know. You, you just, I was a young, I was naive, kind of. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but you know, wide, wide open Midwestern eyes. I, and I'm saying that by comparison to Eugenie Ross Lemming, when I first got into Second City, Eugenie was in the cast, and I always thought that entire cast looked like at midnight somebody had lifted a rock and they'd crawl. They looked like they looked like God. They looked like they'd never seen the daylight before. No, I'm serious. They were scary. They, it was Harold Ramis and God bless them. They were the mo one of the most brilliant casts ever at Second City. So if if that seems like I'm disparaging them, I am not, because it was Harold Ramis, um, Joe O'Flaherty, Eugenie Ross Lemming, Judy Morgan, John Belushi. Um, Brian Doyle Murray and 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 David Bloom who passed away quite early so he's probably not as well known and then maybe Jim Fisher at various times but they it was a very big uh, drug time I mean because the late yeah. 60s were very big drug times and they just really were the most unwholesome looking group I'd ever seen <laughs> but they were absolutely brilliant and created some of the best sketches 
ever at Second City. So I forgot what got me off on that. Well, what was now you said best sketches? What was your one of your favorite sketches at Second City? Well, I, I went was fun because see when I got there, that company was just starting to disband, right? So when I came in, they were just I, John Belushi. Well. John was off in in, uh, in uh, Colorado when I first got into the company, right. and then John came back into the company because Jim Fisher got mono, and so he needed to take his place. So, uh, so when when John, yeah, yeah, so what happened is because that cast was kind of disbanding, and we were getting a lot of new members, they tried something they'd never tried before in 1972, and that was a best of show. And I remember the Del Close, who was our director, just considered that a sellout. Oh my uh, God! <laughs> it was not unique. It was not new. We were failures. But we did a, a best of show of all the material of the first, you know, 13 years of the second city, and a lot of them were from that cast right before us. Oh, so you know, it? like Funeral, which became really yeah. yeah. That's I think everyone I talked to always says that funeral is their favorite to either see or perform or yeah. or you know everyone knows it so it's something that you can always go back to right so that i got to perform that for six months well so when we before that every second city show was about three months they would open a show and about six weeks into it they'd really start honing the material and then another six weeks later they'd open a show so shows were opening almost every regularly every three months when they opened this best of show, it was so popular. It ran for six months, which was a brand new thing for Second City. And it gave us a lot of time as a new cast to create new material and gel. But uh, honest to God, that funeral sketch was fun to perform. And it was so, you know, it was, you know, Bill Belushi and Tino and Sana. Um, Jim Stahl, David Rashi, Betty Thomas. Now, for those who don't know what funeral is, do you want to? Yeah, I was I want to give a little synopsis. Well, I have oh, do you have up. it? I have photos later. Oh. I don't have the whole thing, oh. but just give a little synopsis of well, it, what. Well, it starts out. She. Because what know, was it, it's it originally called? Was it? It's called no. It's called funeral. Was it? Co and then yeah. did they also call? Was it tin camp beans? Oh, van camp beans. Van camp beans. Well, it was actually What's called funeral, funeral and yeah. then they just. Yeah. Well, it's about a woman who. It's a funeral at a funeral house, and um, you know she's really sad. And, just get, and people start coming in, and uh, they say, how, how did he die? And um, <laughs> so the wife says, he had his head stuck in a gallon can of Van Camp's beans. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they just do this. <laughs> and you see them try not to laugh. That's the, the whole thing is they... they and then some people come in and they know how he died and they're just like already trying to control their laughter. And then the son comes in on that one, Belushi played that, oh, he played that really good because he was angry. He didn't want to be at that funeral house. He was mad that people were, you know, teasing his father. And then, and then the wife would go up to the casket and give this speech. And I can just remember it was so much fun because you would start telling the story and the audience would start laughing and it was like riding a wave you know you caught the wave of the laugh you know and you wrote it and 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 it was just an unbelievable climax at the end of just this huge laugh and then the lights would go out it was a beautifully constructed scene a lot of times i think scenes are like climaxes i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, not really, because you see i have to tell you i'm not a so sorry, I'm not a huge fan of the long form because it's not climactic. <laughs> you know, it just goes on you know, it, and, and on it just goes and on, on, on and melds one thing into another, and it's very, you know, it's hard to do, and and it can be very entertaining, and I think it's wonderful for generating ideas. Right. But I think as an audience member, I like the release of a scene building and building and building, and then. You know, you had a punchline. Hard to do, though. Very, very hard to pull off. So I think, you know, a lot of people have gotten away from doing that. Mm -hmm. That's good. 
So you were talking about how my dad found television and film. What made your transition? Like, after Second City, where did you, or what did you want to do? Did you mm. plan on being at Second City forever? Well, you know, I think... Uh, <laughs> I don't think everyone does. <laughs> no, I, I was at, actually at Second City two different times for a year and three months each, and then I think a year and three months in between. I got fired after my first year and three months That's, at Second City. Oh, what, what happened? You didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. you got fired. I'm so sorry, you brought it up. No, <laughs> no uh, you know, and it's okay. Because um, I really was having, I, I'm going to be really honest, I was having panic attacks in those days. I was really having problems staying in my own skin. And I think it made me very impatient with Del Close, who was my director, and liked to <laughs> tell us where best shooting up with John Grant. You know, shooting up, and uh, <clears throat> we would. Uh, <coughs> you know, he would, you know, John and I, uh, <coughs> you, really, that was, that was. Like, I would be would nervous. Be. And, and no, I was nervous, okay. but I was impatient. I was like, okay, let's go with rehearsal, you know. Yeah. And I think that after a while, I think Del and I kind of clashed. But, uh, <coughs> but you know what, I, I think this is so weird. And my daughter, who's sitting in the audience, who's going to say this is weird, but for the for, for the first and only time in my life, I went to a psychic after that, and she said, she said, you know, um, she said, wow, okay, you've got a lot of energy, but something has just been caught out of your life, and blah blah blah, and she's oh, she said, you know, you remind him of his mother. <laughs> You know what? And I completely forgave him in that moment. I said, you know what? It's just one of those things. My chemistry and his were just not mixing at that time. Yeah. It's not his fault and it's not my fault. And I forgave him. I was not bitter. Thank you, God, because uh, Second City rehired me. I did a TV show with them and I had a wonderful time. And I was kind of starting to get a little handle on these anxiety panic attacks. And I was rehired again by the Second City and I had what I kind of call my more golden period because I was happy in my own skin. I was a little older, more experienced, and I created much, much better scenes the second time through. And you had anxiety attacks with my dad. Oh, I don't know if he had them when he was younger, but I do remember him having them when he was older. Well, in my first, I'm so, gosh. So embarrassing. <laughs> oh, I might as well just blob my life out here. Yeah, it's like damn it. Well, no, uh, the first time with, with me that I really had a very that I had one of these panic attacks, I was eating marijuana brownies with John <laughs> with John Belushi. So, uh, <laughs> well, and there were other people there too. And I must say, John was so so nice. Uh, truly, he was. Uh, I really loved. Him. <laughs> But I completely flipped out. I thought I was dying, you know. Uh, quite traumatic. And um, might have had the same. That was the beginning of the, that was the beginning of the panic attacks. So, um, so that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> so Pop Friday's not so much. Yeah, yeah. With John Belushi. Well, and, and of course with John, that's nothing to him. You know, he could just he could ingest anything, and that guy was just like, and he could do sketches. Yeah. yeah, he was just, he was something else, that John Belushi, and, and truly a sweet person, at yeah. least when he was in the Second City, and the most charismatic stage performer I was ever on stage with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that doesn't, you know, everybody's got their own thing, but on stage, because he had almost like an explosive anger, or, or he was, the audience was not scared of him. I mean, when he would come out, he would, he, he would say something, come out, you know, kind of glaring, and he'd say a line, and the audience would just like, bah! <laughs> like they'd been punched in the stomach. <laughs> and then forced to laugh. Like, yeah. just, there you go. So he had a very, and a very different personality, for example, than your father. Well, yeah, my dad had a completely... Who, who you really just wanted to, American. you just wanted to be with him forever, right? If you saw him like an Uncle Buck or any of his movies, you just thought, oh, this is the guy I want to be with. This is a guy I want to hang yeah. with. He, he was a great person to hang with. Everyone, everyone, that was the good thing about him, is he always, um, everyone asked is his characters, was he like that in real life? Like Uncle Buck, was he really like that? I was like, I think my dad was closest to his Uncle Buck character, because yeah. he still was, he was tough, but he was fun, and that was the most relatable that I could tell people. It was like, what was your life like? Well, 
Well, not he, as crazy as Uncle Buck, but you know, pretty pretty. But close. he, I never saw him like get mad or. Oh, know, he got mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not like very every, much. not very much, but like any kid. Yeah. But I do. Okay, so I was. My mom has a whole bunch of photos, and I put together like okay. a slideshow of stuff okay. that we can kind of play a game with it, where we'll play it, and then you can kind of spew out any information that. Or you may okay. have seen some of these or might not oh, have. Oh, I know one other thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, because, because this is very um, relevant to... Video did not even begin till 1975. So nothing before 1975 was really vi videoed. Ever. Yeah. Ever. And so... And I Which was difficult to find sketches of trying to find stuff that you and my dad had done together on stage. I was, you know, I have tons of photos, but video was, was hard to come by, so. Right, because um, there was. Because there, and that's what Second City said. They essentially said, we didn't archive anything. Yeah, and, and I they, went, great. And they did, they started to film the sets with video. I was there in end of 72 through the end of 73, then I was fired, then I was rehired again in 75, and I was there, and then I quit in 76. So in that later period, they started to videotape our set so you could see what you had done, but before that, you just had to remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Always, you just had to remember. You really had to listen and, and think. Okay, okay so play, uh, we sorry. can play this. Okay. So, well, that's, I don't know if that's at your head. Oh, <laughs> so these are just, this is some okay. of the stuff that Second City said to me. It's like, oh, that's look so at that. Funny. It's okay. a cute photo. Your yeah. eyes and your hair is so pretty, and we can. Okay, let's go through. <laughs> 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 Oh, I oh, love that one. Isn't that a great shot? That's one of my shot? favorite photos. Isn't that a great shot? It's so cute. Oh, now, oh, wow. what are we all doing? <laughs> Miriam's somewhere Miriam in the middle. Miriam Flynn. Who George. Gave me this scarf. Uh -huh. Which I love that scarf. It's so yeah. pretty. Jim Sherman and Don DePolo, Mert Rich, and, and George. Was Lent. that in Chicago? Oh, yes. That was, yes, that was all. Yeah, yeah, this is in Chicago. Now that's you, and I think I, David. That's me. Yes. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I think David. Ro is that David oh, Rushy? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I just thought that. Was I have fun. no Can idea you what do we're that doing still? there. there you go. <laughs> What's that scene? Well, it looks like it's some kind of '50s thing where I'm jumping on him and dancing. Yeah. There's Paul. This is this is when we went to Toronto. This is when we did the exchange. Of, the second city in Toronto came to came, Chicago, and Chicago and we, went to yes, Toronto. Yes, and this was the company that we brought to uh, to Toronto. Betty, Thomas, and myself, Paul Ziegler, Mert Rich, and Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Betty's fun to talk about because Betty was broke. She was completely broke, and she was a hard person to cast, I have to tell you. She really was. She got this little part in Hill Street Blues when my daughter was born. Because I remember her coming over and going, hey, I just got this little part in this program, Hill Street Blues. And we were thrilled for her, thrilled for her. And then they kept her on as a regular. And then after about four years, she got to direct. And then she, she's directed several movies, and she directed Alvin and... and the chipmunks, the squeak roll, <laughs> which grossed two hundred and nineteen million dollars. One of the top not grossing, too shabby. One of the top grossing um, I, uh, Kung Fu Panda Two was directed by a Chinese woman, but I think Betty's one of the top five women, uh, top five grossing women film directors. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's okay. So funny. And I'm still in touch with. No, that's okay. I oh, yes, yeah, Stephen. <laughs> American Gothic. <laughs> we opened the show. Um, you know, Second City liked to, in those days, open the show with the entire cast kind of on stage in a picture kind of thing so you would get to know the cast. They had this kind of general theory. It, don't bring people on one at a time and don't have people come on in crazy characters. Bring everybody on. Let the audience get to know you. And so, like oh yeah, I know this one. This is what this was a diner scene, where Jim Stahl came in, and we were positive that he was James Dean, and he was still alive. We were just <laughs> completely flipped out that we thought we were seeing James Dean, and that yeah, yeah, that's called diner. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's from 
Uh, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, part six, which I get more mail about than anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people and then, like to see me be headed. True That's Hills. True Beverly Hills with Shelley Long, who gave me this dress. <laughs> dress is from Shelley Long, this is from Miriam Flynn, so I still see those Second City people. Oh, yeah. And then this is from Curb Your, Nan, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Nan Kauser. Mm -hmm. Curb Your Enthusiasm. But look at Catherine over there. <laughs> I like the crazy sister. Oh, she was good. And oh. this is what you just most recently oh did. God. found this on the internet. This is oh my God. This is when I played uh, Mary Todd Lincoln this summer. But that was serious. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done everything. You've gone from comedy. What was, what was the, yeah. the challenge? Or was there a challenge? Or what did you... You know, I, I found that I couldn't make a living as an improvisational actress. Okay? I mean, I don't know. No, you no, know, you can't. Because either you start teaching. Right. Do you know that the second city in Chicago does not make any money off of their shows? or the bar, or the restaurant, they only make their money off of the school. And that I know for a fact. Uh-oh, this is being taped and replaced. <laughs> no, but that is It's Second City Confessionals. That, that's the truth, because people do make their money off of teaching. A lot of, a lot of people do. And uh, it's a wonderful thing, because people are passing on their knowledge. Uh, but at the time, uh, I found that I couldn't I, like in, improv was not translating into earning a living in television and movies. Mm -hmm. So I started, um, I took a year of acting classes with a woman named Salome Jen. She's a wonderful, wonderful teacher. And then I started, uh, so I, and then I'm very, very fortunate. I got cast into a TV show called Private Benjamin, mm -hmm. which I did for, uh, uh, I'm going to say a season and a half, and I earned more money off of that than anything I've ever done. I mean, I earned more money, I really earned a decent amount of money on that. Uh, because, in, but nowadays, CTV is different because there was, then, there was four networks on NBC, ABC, CBS, and not even Fox. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Fox was just not even coming into being yet. This is the groundbreaking, you're in the groundbreaking era of, you know, television. Becoming more popular. Yeah, so, well, so you only made your, you know, so you people made, made a decent amount of money if you were in a TV show. And I, I really, I, I sometimes feel sorry for actors nowadays. I just don't know how they're going to make a... How, make, how you make a living? It's I really, really, really hard. You either have to have multiple jobs or start booking lots of commercials. Cause I, right, I'd be interested to hear, you know. Yeah, how, <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> sarcastically at all. I mean that very sympathetically that I think it's terribly difficult to break in to making a living. You know, when I was there, there was not very many improvisers. Now, now, oh my gosh, the improvisers are so fabulously trained. They're mm -hmm. so funny. They've got so much background. They've performed in so many companies. You know, really, we didn't. We were, there was, was a, not a lot of people. No. It's a different era. It's a different era. And I think it was, I, I was talking last, when, uh, two weeks ago when I was talking to Dave, Dave just saying how back then was so much, they said he just described it as easier. It, yeah, there's, there's a, as, as, easier. as easier. But okay, so I did find, so I was, when I was looking, rummaging through videos of uh -huh. uh, Second City, uh -huh. they, they stumbled upon a environmental video that you had done and I have a clip a uh, snippet of it that I'm going to oh, play because okay. I don't think you said you had well, to remember what it was you or? know I know that I think of it maybe we did this for public television let's see <laughs> Jones can get back into the mainstream of the American power structure. We hope so. The magic wheel. <laughs> Oh. 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 Water pollution! <laughs> oh, water pollution! There's the issue! Here's the box! Mrs. Jones, whose fault is it? <laughs> we recently had some house guests from Mexico in, and they refused to drink our tap water. Now, I don't blame them. You can see the gunk pouring in from those big factories. I blame management. Oh, management, that's my box! Management cares about you, the public. Uh -huh. Now, we no longer pour industrial waste into the water, we pour it onto the ground. As a matter of fact, we'd like to change the whole industrial process, but organized labor is fighting us every step of the way. I blame labor! Labor, Yeah, they're going to change the industrial process, all right? They're going to move the factory to Japan. And we're not going to stand for it. Now, somebody ought to be able to get in there and clean up the water without laying off thousands of American workers. And I think the only person big enough to do that is Uncle Sam. So I blame Uncle Sam. Ah, come on, you the buck! 
I'm uh, reminded of a humorous story. Oh, come on, All right, all right. Now, we would seriously like to clean up all our waterways, but that's going to cost billions and billions of dollars, which means an increase in taxes. Now, the public won't stand for that, so I blame the public. <laughs> Could go for another hour. Well, no, I, I just, you know, hour. for the last five years, I've been doing a lot of stage work. And that just kind of happened because I really feel like I'm not a crisp auditioner for movies and for television. I just feel like I don't go in and go, boom, boom, boom. Oh, I know just how I would cast her. I just feel like I'm not very good at that. So my friend had this, was starting up a play reading group where, and he asked me, would I read a play for him? And I thought, yeah, and I, I read this play, and I, I kind of stayed in the group because I thought I'm not really very good at auditioning, but if people generally see what I do, they kind of like me. And so, uh, and that has happened. You know, that's what happened because somebody in the group recommended me for a show that was casting something, and then I did that show, and then they recommended me. And then, so for the last year, I've been doing a, last five years, I've been doing a lot of theater. theater. Well, that's yeah. great. You've, I think you've I heard. earn no money. <laughs> so gotta go back it. to the television and film yeah. there. That's where it, that television is where it is. Television right yeah. now, because everyone from film is moving to television mm -hmm. because the hours are better. Well, unless you're doing single cam, which then can take forever. But you know, yeah. you can make a living. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, right. I, I, you know, I, I don't get called in that often anymore for television. I think the last thing I. Did, was it Grey's Anatomy? You did Mad Men? I did Mad Men. That's oh, that was fun. Mm -hmm. That was fun. You, you have to wear real lot. girdles, real oh. pointy bras, <laughs> <laughs> real garter belts. Yep, they really go even from the from the inside out really? in that show. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm not easy to fit, so that was. I mean, because I'm I'm a tall person. That was a lot of fun, and they were very very good. But that's a show, you know. Again, you got to come in with your. Yeah. Act together, okay? Because you come in, there's 40 people around, you got your scene, they go, okay, let's rehearse, let's shoot it. So, you know, um, it's not like you're going to improvise too much in that situation, but I think what improv obviously does give you is the ability to think on your feet and uh, a confidence in yourself that, you know, if something goes awry, yeah. that you can that you can tap dance. It happened, I just did a show at, at Theater 40 and, and um, <laughs> something happened on the stage. Uh, very rarely in this cast, this, this was an awfully good cast, they almost never made a mistake, but I think it was practically the last night somebody made a, you know, it'd be like me calling her, you know, Mary. And it was on stage and it was like, pretty obvious to the audience. Is like, um, uh. And so the girl goes, did you just call me Mary, right? <laughs> and and so and so and then, and then and a couple so so then a couple mistakes and happened. Where improv came but in that's where it really helped what because I, I finally went, what's going you know, I finally went, what's going on here? And then I got it right back on track because you know, okay, you're already thinking a couple of steps ahead. Yeah. And uh, obviously improv helps you in commercial auditions, it helps you uh, it helps you fill out a character, but I, what I really find helps me the very, very most is whenever I do any part now, I do such a huge background. Uh, I do a huge written background about what is my, the first thing I do is what is my relationship with the person in the scene and um, uh, how do I feel about it? It's my mother and I hate her because she's like, yeah. been terrible to me my whole life, right? Second thing is, is what is the event of the scene? Yeah. What's happening? And then the third thing, what am I fighting for? And I do a huge, huge written background. Uh, so I find... Uh, and you come prepared and that you know that, you know, improv is something that you have in your tool belt that will help with every aspect, television, film, theater. Oh. I loved being in the Second City. It is the best... Um, 
fraternity of people I could have possibly well, it's, yeah. started off in. It's a good fraternity to be in. Oh. It's like my second family, and that's the, why I kind of created the show. And they're so fun and lively, and improvisers are, they listen. That's another yeah. thing. They listen. You know, they have to listen. <laughs> They're going to miss something. Yeah. I'm, I'm, very, I'm extremely grateful for having been on the second stage. Does anybody have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Did you get to work with John Hamm? John Hamm? What, From um, Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah yes, <laughs> um, yes. Yes, I did. Though uh, my scene was more with his wife, Bonnie. Is that her name? I think the, I am going to be I, the blonde. Yeah, my scene was <laughs> more with her. Mm. My yeah. friend was actually his body double. But we rehearsed, we rehearsed <laughs> together. He's very, very handsome. I know. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're like, hold on, did I you? I need to. together. <laughs> He's very, very cute. Hey, there's a lot of cute people in show business. You have to always try to keep it together. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, Anne, I think uh, this is the... Uh, so is it over? I think the time has come to an end. Oh, but right. I want to say oh. thank you so much. I just, my mom and my family have always, you know, talked of Annie Ryerson and how they have loved you and oh. I loved you. And I just have, have oh. Well, I do, I do. Oh, can I say one more thing you about can say one, You can say one more oh, thing. Oh, when we did, when we shot Big City Comedy in, yeah. in Salt Lake City, John really was Johnny LaRue. He, he loved to live yeah. big. And he was so cute, and he hosted my brother, and my brother was giving John some treat. Oh, you know, one of the things that I, not a lot of people know, now, pros, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is I think John had no kneecap. He didn't. Right. He had no left oh. kneecap. Yeah. Football, left. Right. football injury. Football injury, and so he couldn't exercise. Yeah. It made things very, very difficult for him, and that was in the early 70s. And it was something that always kind of impressed me because the poor guy really could not exercise. Yeah, no, he, I know everyone's like, oh, no, he had a fake kneecap. I'm like, no, 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 he had no yeah, kneecap. Yeah, and though, nowadays maybe they would make a fake patella or something. Yeah, he's supposed to have one because it affects, it affects the Chinese. Yeah, yeah, but he couldn't. Yeah. The only thing he could maybe do is go swimming, so it really made it very difficult for him. But gosh, he was fun. He was so much fun, and my brother treated... John's right. feet and everything, and he was so kind. He said, I'm going to fly up to Toronto and treat my mom. So he flew my brother Lee up to Toronto. And you should mention that your brother's a chiropractor, otherwise, this makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was He's going to ask, hold on, wait, what did your brother do? Because I couldn't remember if he was, he was a, a garbage man. He was yes. garbage man. <laughs> he cracked people's bones right. on the All side. Right. He's a chiropractor. <laughs> anyway, I love John yeah, Candy. Well, there, it's a whole family affair, so that's why I had to Thank have you God, on the show. Thank God, it makes more sense. Do <laughs> <laughs> you, you now feel complete that we can now? <laughs> well, God knows where my mind was going. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And thank you so well, very much for coming out pleasure. here. And I want to say thank you guys so much for coming out. And yeah, I will be you. here in two weeks. And my next guest is going to be uh, the wonderful Jim Belushi. So I would hope to see you guys again here. And I would like to say, wait for it. That's all, folks. Drive safe and get out! So